now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Hallelujah. We'll wait about another minute, then we'll get started. We'll have you pray up in, Sister Lindy, in about another minute. Okay. Man, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Oh, I almost forgot since I didn't do that. So I'm gonna do um our mission statement right quick. Um just for a little okay. now, just for announcements for everybody to know. Iron sharpen iron next Tuesday. We'll just get be getting back from our vacation. We're going down to New Orleans this Thursday. So we will be gone. So I think I'm 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 not for sure if we'll be back in time next Tuesday on that day. And I think on the itinerary, I think we come in later on that night. So we're not going to have Iron Sharp as Iron next Tuesday. Also, for Christ Ahead, the men's meeting this Sunday morning will be out of state. So we won't be having that until, you know, the following Sunday. But I'll be posting videos, you know, on our um trip out of state. Remember, if you would like to join in onto the study, there will be a link of... um. The email, you can just drop, you know, just drop your email and we'll send the link to you. That way you can join on and join the discussion in this hour. It's vital that you bring yourself to the word of God so the noble right vine can cleanse you. There is no other way by men may be saved by, by under that name, Jesus. That is it. So our mission is to collectively come together for Bible study as we get to know each other personally, building genuine godly relationships only then can we truly come to love one another as our Lord has commanded. First John 3, 23, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. Hallelujah. So many people do not understand that when Christ tells us to get to know who we labor amongst, he wasn't talking about to get to know the building or the church, but get to know each other. Sometimes we have to go to a setting that's not a religious setting so we can see the true thing of each other. We can see the true fellowship of each other. You'll be surprised. People just like letting all kinds of stuff slip out of their mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so you be blessed and we're thankful. And Sister Lindy is going to pray us in. As others join us, we'll be letting them in into the study. Amen. Okay, amen. Oh, Father God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for keeping us safe today, for providing for us today, for sustaining us today. We just thank you and praise you for the ability to come and gather and for you giving your word to Brother Gary to share with us. May we open our hearts and our minds to the word and may we Provide the action that goes along with Father God. We just praise you and we thank you. We invite the Holy Spirit in on that study tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Good, good prayer. So we're thankful that you joined in. Here comes Brother Lemuel coming in right now. We're thankful that you joined in. Remember the scripture said when two or more are gathered, he is in the mix. So all we need is two people to get started and we haven't we haven't um study amen and we can reach many through that as we get in our word we're going to see the apostle paul as he encountered timothy as he encountered timothy the ministry can move forward now this is right after his dissension after he got in a big dissension with barnabas and the thing that came about is as when they went down to establish the churches mark whose surname is john John, whose surname is Mark, already had left them, but he wanted to come back on the trip to go back down and to establish the churches where they already went to establish the word when before he had left them. So Paul was correct, not wanting to bring him again with them. So this caused a heavy dissension between him and Barnabas. So they went their separate ways. 
Barnabas took Mark with him, and we see that the Apostle Paul took Silvanaeus. But we see, we're going to start right here in, um, in our footing at Acts 16, 1 through 5. And just a reminder, so we can understand before this, that the Apostle Paul and Barnabas went down, and as they were converting Gentiles, there was a big dispute because the Pharisees was coming behind them, telling the people, now unless they kept the Mosaic law, they cannot be saved. Remember, we already had joined the discussion with the Holy Ghost and with the elders and the saints back down in the church that showed us if you keep certain parts of the law, you should do fine. They simplified it. So we already know when Christ Jesus came to fulfill the law, we keep the commandment. One is to love God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul. And number two is just like it, to love thy neighbor. Guess what? That has been simplified. Every commandment after that is dealing with your neighbor. Thou should not kill. Thou should not steal. Thou should not commit adultery. All of that is dealing with your neighbor. So all you have to do is keep love. That's why it's so vital. Hallelujah. So in this, we're going to see, um, starting right here at Acts 16, 1 through 5. Then came he to Derby in Lystra. This is talking about the Apostle Paul. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek. So we see that Timotheus' mother was a Jewess, but his father was a Greek, and everybody in town know it. A man is after, I mean, well, a, a son is after his father. That's why the Apostle Paul knew it would be hard for Timothy, because when you are a son, your father is your inheritance, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lestra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took him and circumcised him because of the Jews that was in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. So this is how deep that these Pharisee-minded people are, the word Apostle Paul had to circumcise Timotheus because they knew that his father was a Greek and his mother was a Jewish. So you know they're going to be accusing him not to be a part of the faith, not to be a Jew. They was going to be accusing him. So the Apostle Paul had to circumcise him so they would be able to get past that hurdle of these Pharisee-minded people accusing Timothy of not being a part of the faith and also going to the forest checking him to see if he was circumcised. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees to keep. Remember, we was talking, we had a discussion about a week or two ago when we was talking about when Paul and Barnabas went to go establish the, the establish the word of Jesus Christ to the Gentile that they should be saved. There were some Pharisees coming behind them saying, unless you keep the Mosaic law, you cannot be saved. So look at even after the dissension of the apostle Paul and Barnabas, and they went their separate ways, Paul is still delivering the letter. He's with Timotheus now. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for the key that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in numbers daily. So we're just pointing that out to look at that we have some things to keep. It wasn't all this religiosity. It wasn't all this religious stuff that people are trying to say you have to keep today. As we look in our word, we see that the Apostle Paul is still carrying that letter when they had the discussion with the elders and the apostles and some of the Pharisees back down in Jerusalem when this dispute came up. Remember what's contained in the letter, thou shalt stay away from things strangled, thou shalt stay away from blood, thou shalt not accept, you know, meats from idols. And remember it told us to stay away from fornication and you shall do good. Hallelujah. Amen. That's simplified, right? That's simplified enough, ain't it? Amen. How you doing there, Brother Lemuel? Can you hear me? Okay. How everybody's doing? Hey, dear. How everybody's doing? All right, brother. Ms. Lindy, Ms. Michelle. Good to see you. The wife yeah, okay. is Hi, Mia. She's not on right now. Fine, thank you. Amen. Yeah. 
So as we look in this word, we're just we're bringing this up so we can see that you know this we're living in a rough time right now. God is letting us know there's going to be some things that's going to be ceasing out of this world. So I brought up those things for us to see that how the Lord has simplified things for us to keep, but people are still not satisfied with that. So there's going to be something that's going to be occurring right before your eyes. And we need to know these things because if you're not in a situation where you can keep the commandments of God who has been simplified so we can, you know, make it, then, you know, it's going to be a problem. It's, <laughs> it definitely is. You're dealing with a holy God. That's definitely going to be a problem. So as we get in our word right here in Jeremiah 16 at 19 and 13, you know, let us see. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days, the voice of mirth, which that is laughter, and the voice of gladness. Man, I'm gonna stop right there. If anybody got anything they wanna say, man, speak on this, allow the Holy Ghost to move in you. It's gonna be happening in front of our eyes the voice of laughter and the voice of gladness is going to be ceasing in front of us. In our eyes. Meaning you're going to be looking at this occur. But if your mind is not focused on the heavenly things, you're going to miss it. If your mind is focused on carnal things, guess what? It's going to go right past you. And you're going to be in a trap, stuck. the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show these people all these words and they shall say unto thee, wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? So we see not only is the Lord leaving, but the bride is leaving as well. Can we see that? So we got the voice of laughter that's leaving. We got the voice of gladness that's leaving. We got the bridegroom that's taken off. We got the bride that's leaving. That's why I say if you in Christ Jesus, you can count it all joy. You count it all joy if you leave from here. It's beautiful. I've seen it from here, so I can tell you firsthand. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Remember, eyes have not yeah. seen, ears have not heard the things that the Lord has stored as in place for those who love him. Remember that. Go ahead, Brother Lemuel. Well, yeah. I, dear, I, well, you know, I, you can just see it now with those who love Jesus. You know, I see, you know, uh, God people helping okay. those in need. And uh, I mean, they always joyful. You know what I'm saying? You know, and uh, they seem like they, uh, they have problems, but they know that God is there with them. Okay. You know, they never complain. I just put it that way, you know. So, I mean, I, this might be, you know, out from what this scripture is. Scripture. Oh, ain't none of it off. All of it is huh? good, brother. All that the Holy Ghost put on your mind, the mm -hmm. Spirit put on you to tell, convey us, ain't nothing off. Everything's good. Yes, sir. And, and the part that you're talking about, Lemuel, is that in this, in this, in this, um, with all of this atrocity going on, God give us peace. Remember, we spoke on that land of Goshen in Egypt that was afforded from God to Joseph and his family. They had light in the middle of darkness. So you're correct. Well, all of this going on right here with the voice of Mirth is going to be leaving. And the voice of gladness is going to be leaving. Guess what? The 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 people that are still here of God and to waiting for our transition, we're going to be joyous. We're going to be happy. Man, that's deep. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the word I would probably want to say. Peace. They just have that peace. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, agree. Brother Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. what's happening? Yes, oh, man. I'm hey, glad Dwayne. I'm good, too. How y'all doing, man? <laughs> How's everybody been? All right, brother. Mm -hmm. Fine, Dwayne. That's what's happening, man. 
<laughs> got to, bro. You got to. Right, right. At yes. all costs. Yes, sir. Hey, just as much as the devil want to win, God, listen, we got just as much as they working, we right. got to work. You right. hear me? Amen. Let them Amen. do what they do. You got to keep doing what you do. Right. Yes, sir. And don't let nothing. Or no one discourage you from it. Man, hallelujah. Stand on the word. Right, right. Amen. Even atheists know that God will prevail. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody, they got they do <laughs> yes, the yes, look, do. look, they they work. Mm -hmm. The work they're doing, they're working to prove their rank. And everything they came across showing them there there is, even though they still make the choice to not believe. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, you know what Jesus said? Unless I see a sign, I won't believe. Right. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, hey. some, some people, <laughs> and, and, and the thing, And the thing of it is that some of our um things that we're going to go through with dealing with people are not going to be from atheists. <laughs> that people no. that don't believe is going to be from people who have that ran believe. with something that ain't the truth, but they yes. believe in something other than the truth. Mm -hmm. It's hard to win them back over because they've been keeping <laughs> in the lie for so long to yeah. finally have to admit that you have accepted a lie for all of these years and you mm -hmm. must turn back. Yes, sir. Mm -mm -mm. That's the pride. You gotta of turn back. You gotta. But God loves every every you... knee. Right, right. Amen. Every knee. He ain't said a couple. <laughs> <laughs> right. Every. Ain't nobody yeah. excluded. Every. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, just get, so just to get you caught up um, real quick, Dwayne, we were talking about, um, remember when the Apostle Paul and Barnabas went back down to the church because it was a big dispute about keeping the Mosaic law. Somebody was coming behind them as they was delivering the word to the Gentiles and getting them saved, saying, unless you keep the Mosaic law, you cannot be saved. So they went back down to Jerusalem and the elders and the, the, um, the elders and, and, and the... Um, the, the elders, the prophets, and you know the brothers from the church, they had a discussion on this, <laughs> the Holy Ghost. And they uh -huh. came up with a conclusion that in these four things, they should do fine. So it wasn't to keep a whole Mosaic law to somebody who was just getting converted, but the Lord simplified it. As long as you stay away from things strangled, as long as you stay away from blood, because life is in the blood, as long mm -hmm. as you stay away from receiving things, meats from idols, and also mm -hmm. from fornication, you shall mm -hmm. do good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. remember, we must keep the commandment. Look how God did it. Remember, there's so many commandments. Somebody that's just coming into the faith can't keep all of this. So guess what he did? He simplified it. Number one, you shall love God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. Number two is just love like your it. Neighbor the love same. thy neighbor. Remember, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not the steal, same. thou shalt not commit adultery. All that yeah. is against a person. Yes. yes. So he said yes. to keep love, and it simplifies Ooh. everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, that's powerful. Amen. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Dwayne. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I hey, know, man. Amen, yes, brother. Yeah, you was reading from Jeremiah 16. What scripture you was reading from? Was that Jeremiah 16? Uh, 9 through 13? 9 to 13. Oh, yeah, from the board. Yeah, 16, 9 through 13. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. I was bringing, I was bringing uh, it into just... this right here. Yeah. So hmm. I was just showing how God has simplified it. And made it easy for us to keep yeah. his laws and commandments. But here we are. We still do not get it. So look what's going to happen. God is going to cause for laughter, for gladness in front of our eyes to cease in front of us. Guess what else is leaving? God's voice is leaving and his people. Yeah. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show the people all these words. And they shall say on thee, wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great evil on us or what is our iniquity or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God then shall y'all say unto them because your fathers have forsaken me first of all they left the Lord and said and have walked after other gods 
Remember, in this land is all these different gods. Everybody that's trying to exalt himself, whether in baseball, basketball, movie production, all of that stuff worketh iniquity and have served them and have worshipped them. See, a lot of people left God's word to where you think you're getting blessed, you're being deceived by your heart, and you think just because you're getting money from Satan that somehow you are getting blessed. You have merchandised the word of God and have forsaken me and have not kept my law and you have done worse than your father. For behold, you walk after the imaginations of this evil heart. Remember, your heart is wicked above all things. We're not supposed to lean on our own understanding for a reason. You wait for God to give you a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you. When you do that, then you'll be able to be like David in the old time with the Urim and the Thummim on his blessed grave with the ephod and speak to the Lord. You hear me? Hey, Lord, do you want me to go up this way or that way? No, go this way. See, the Lord will speak to you in your spirit. That way you can walk according to his statue. That he may not hearken unto me. So oh, this is big here. <clears throat> you know, people are not listening to God. God has simplified things for us, and we're still not getting it. We're walking after this world. We're walking after this vain world. We're walking after the imaginations of our heart. We're not bringing ourselves to the word so the word can cleanse us and give us a new heart and a new spirit. Man, this is important. It's important. So in our eyes, God is going to cause all of this. Man, do you know what kind of God you got? You got a God who can come get you out the middle of the game, change your heart and put you back in it while everybody looking. Hey, he gave his only begotten son up for us to be here. He ain't had that to do. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he, he, listen, and guess what? We still ain't right, but guess what he had? He knew hope. Amen. Amen. Yes, Thank you, son. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Man, therefore will I cast you out of this land and into a land that you do not know. Neither you nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, while I shall not show you favor. So we see this being happening right now. People are serving all these different gods, lowercase gods, and the Lord is not showing them favor because they are not positioning themselves right. To position yourself right is to seek God first. Then all these things shall be added unto you. God wants to wash us. Don't you know that this right here ain't life? This is a deception. Life eternity is in heaven. And it's beautiful, man. I'm telling you. Jesus said in my father's house, there are many mansions. Man, just think about being in a place Ooh. where all these killings ain't going on. All these hey. things messing with kids, Ooh. messing with all this ain't going on. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't listen. Look, look. All right, I just want to hold a dome. You hear me? Right. Even, oh, a, even a even a doman, even a doman know. Oh, it's awesome in there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm -mm. Man, 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 that's deep right there, man. That's powerful. Anybody got anything? Anybody got anything they want to add to that? Yeah, well, it's very powerful. Just like Duane said, you know. And yeah. Yeah, we're thankful. We're thankful that we can come boldly to the word, you know, because this it's it's what cleanses us, especially in this hour. All this stuff going on with people, people are de dependent on this world. It's letting you down. They're showing you each day they don't love you. They're showing you each day you ain't nothing. They kicking you, beating you, killing you, shooting you. They're doing all of that, and they getting away with it. I was just looking at the TV the other day. They keep talking about Trump. They've been talking about him for ten years. <laughs> I'm just saying, one of us will just be getting out of jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll just be getting out of prison. Mm -hmm. You hear me? <laughs> so you see, this world don't love you. I'm saying, showing you. But Jesus yeah. is giving you an outway. But you let the enemy deceive you because you're walking by sight and you think he's some picture on the wall. But guess what? The enemy has been given the authority to deceive you like he did Job. 
and he's doing a good job because you won't bring yourself to the word. Remember, yeah. don't put your hands on him, but you can throw an illusion and try to deceive him. But but Job held on to his faith. He hold on to what his mother taught him. Hold on to what his father taught him. And guess what? You seen the end of Job when he got restored everything back to him because he didn't curse God. Hey, listen, boy, that was a good one right there too. Because mm. Job, Job even told his wife. You sound like one of them out right here. Get away from me. Mm -mm -mm. You know what I'm talking about? Man. God said, listen, God said you got to love your wife like you love the church. Right. Right? Joe yes, said, listen, sir. you better go on with that foolishness. <laughs> mm -mm. That, that's strong. That is, I and, that, and that's funny you bring that up because I tell people, you know, with no, like, with little faith, that's, that's, the, that's the first book I would tell them to go. Check out Joe. If you have, check out Joe. Right. If, you, if you if you're struggling with you know you don't want to believe check out Job. Mm -hmm. Amen. Through the whole process, Job still held his ground. Well, right. God did it to me. Look, God give it to me. He can take it away. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the right. show. Cause we we don't we don't only thing we do is wake up. That's God giving us life. Waking up. Mm -hmm. Go to sleep at night. That's God letting us know you can go to sleep at night. Right. Yes, sir. Job. <laughs> Job, Job definitely, Job yeah. definitely. I agree with you. Job is a good book for us to be able to stand on. We're getting persecuted. Remember, his whole house perished, and he still kept the faith. His wife tried to go against him, and he put her in her place and still kept the faith. Guess what? His friends come down. Aliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar come down not to encourage him, but to ridicule and chastise him. So you got friends that are come against you in that hour. But guess what? He stayed true and faithful to what God was doing inside of him and what God showed him. Yeah. Remember, who do men say I am? Who do you say I am? When Jesus comes to you, who do you say he is? See, the whole world on the outer are going to be trying to tell you who he is, but he came to you. So who do you say he is? Right here at 57.1 of Isaiah, the righteous perish. So remember, people that are right is being taken away from us. That's why you say such and such lived a long age. Man, he just died. You don't know what went on. Look at the righteous perish and no man lay it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. And none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. God is allowing him to be taken away from here so they don't have to endure the evil that is about to come upon this world. And we just read right here, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. It's going to be leaving. It shall cease out of this place in your eyes, right in front of you. He's doing this. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, man, it's, it's real out there right now, you know. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Mm -mm. Hey, Amen. Anybody? Yeah. Sorry, Sorry about that, Lemuel. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, you were saying about uh, the words. Uh, when you, uh, it's about the words. It comes to you through spirit, you know. Uh, when you're thinking about things and then something happened or uh, whatever, it's just God words come to you, you know. No, definitely. Right, they do. They do. Yeah. That's why I was speaking on it's important that we wait on salvation. You know, when you get some time, go and look at L Lamentation 3 at 24 and 26. You know, it's a beautiful thing for us to wait on salvation. Because when you're wait on salvation, you're waiting for God to not only give you a quick heart and renew a right spirit in you, but God is going to give you access in the spirit. Like David, when David had the, the ephod, he could speak to the Lord. Remember, only the king can have it or only the priest can have it. And since David was a priest and a king, he can speak to the Lord. Remember, the Lord has made a way through his son, Christ Jesus, that we all can partake and come boldly to the throne now. You can speak to the Lord in your understanding, in your mind. And this is what we're going to be needing to walk in the spirit. 
This is what we're going to need to walk in this book right here. When you are faced with all of these demons coming at you, trying to merchandise you, just like the Lord said to the devil on the mountain in Job, man cannot live off bread alone. And Matthew, I mean, sorry about that. Matthew 4, 4. Man cannot live off bread alone, but every word that proceeds out the mouth of the Lord. Then Satan took Jesus up on a high mountain and said, if you worship me, I will give you all the glory of this life. Remember, all the glory of this life has been given to Satan. And people are out there playing baseball, making money, socking people in the head. And they're making all of this money, not considering they are working for the spirit of this world. Man, that's deep. You've been deceived. You have been deceived. <laughs> and it's deep, man. It's not funny, but I'm just saying how so many people do really do not know the word of God. So many forefathers and matriarch and patriarchs of people's families have not given them the word of God. Don't you know you're working for Satan? This world has been handed over to Satan. And many people are working for him. They're not learning the word of God. They're not at study. But guess what? They're all on TV showing their teeth and showing their diamonds and all of the stuff that they are receiving from Satan. And he has tricked many of them. So since their mind is stayed on that illusion, mm -hmm. guess what? It's going to be caused to cease in front of you. In your day, the voice of laughter and the voice of gladness. God's going to do this all in front of you while you partaking in the illusion. Every all of us that saints, we're gonna be gone <laughs> right in front of mm, you, mm, mm. right in front of you. That's good, that's how powerful he is. He came that's to really out the cell, and I like to use my experiences. You guys use yours too, because we've got a lot of new people coming out here that don't know what we're talking about. But God came and took me out of a cell in front of a whole bunch of people. Change me right in front of them. <clears throat> this is how powerful our God is. It's almost like I had to be there in that room. I had to go to jail and be there on that date because there was an appointed salvation for me. It was no other place but in that cell. It was hey. in that cell. I had to get processed. I had to get fingerprinted. I had to get booked. I had to be there. There was an appointment there. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Man. hey, without our struggles, who are we? Mm -hmm. We gotta, right. we gotta have it. We gotta, we be thinking about, like, wow. like, shh. um, so I wish I would have did this when I was younger. But if you hear where you are right now, everything right. fell just how God wanted to fall. Sure. I believe that. Definitely, I believe that. We need those, some of them things, some of those characteristics we need it because where we going, we got to be strengthened. If you ain't, if you ain't there, you can't get there. Mm -mm. Right. Man, man, man. Without you doing whatever you did to get to that cell, you can't be right here right now if you didn't go through that. Right, right. I'm definitely a firm believer in that. God has built us. And it's almost like, it's not almost like it is to what you're saying, um, Dwayne, is when Samuel went into Jesse's house, he thought all of these, the big sons that had the outward look, the posure, composure, the stature, but no, God says, no, I have refused them. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Look who's in the backyard. Look who's been out wrestling in the dangers and the cares of gang member and drugs and building up a testimony. King David in the backyard wrestling with lions and bears who God was getting prepared to take the throne. See us down there building our witness up. God was getting us prepared for now. See, you got hands-on experience and what people are going through that we got to be there to pull them out. Through our experience, through our witness that God down downloaded in us. Hey, check it out. So in uh 2010, I had went back home because uh my grandmother told me she was dying, you heard me? 
Yes, and so I, I went back home, you know, and I got to see her, you know, mm-hmm. and I knew though, you know, right. So after that, all I ever said was, "Let a job come up, I'm gone. Let a job come up, I'm gone." Right. Hey, two years later, one of my friends, he called me. He said, "Hey, Ready got a job in Seattle. Mm. What's up?" Take my words to him was, "Man, I ain't lost nothing up there. What I'm going up there for?" Right. <laughs> All I did was hung the phone up. I didn't. I, I look. I just hung the phone up. Soon as I turn the phone over, I hear God saying, "What you doing? You said for two years. You said for two years if something come up, you gonna take it. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Look, me not doing it, bro. I would not be here right now. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that goes to what you're saying. See, so I had to." So even though I might have really want to, right? God still knew that he read it and he need to. Right. Who's to know me don't take the trip? Where would I be today? Probably dead somewhere in jail. Right. Mm. Amen. Yes, sir, brother. So, you gotta go through these things. The pain. As a matter of fact, look, look. If you're going through some pain today, just ask God how to go through it. Don't ask him to remove it. It's a purpose for it. It's for somebody. Somebody need the medicine. Right. A mango tree make mangoes for who? <laughs> oh, we all got fruit for somebody. Right, right. Amen. So as we as we, we got a couple of minutes left, we'll log back on. I actually got a scripture or two left real short for us to just see from the carnal mind aspect. Then we can go because we need to show the people what is carnally minded. Since we come into this life carnally minded, but we have to get ourselves in the word of God so we can be cleansed by the noble right mind. And he'll come and God will send him to us. That's at John 6 and 44. And he will give us a new heart. He will give us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Then we can operate from walking in what Christ is telling us, you know, his laws that he had received from his father. So just, I wanted to throw this out there just so we can understand that when the Lord comes to you, you will see how powerful he is. Even me, I knew. I'm not saying that I wasn't going to accept the Lord. I've been hearing about all my life from my mom and from people around me. But when you experience that for yourself, it's a whole other different experience. So when the Lord came to me, I could see that if I rejected it, there was death down those dead ends. Yes, sir, it was. people that you see it now, some people are dying because they're going home. And some people are perishing because they refuse to line up with what their purpose here in life was for. And that's why it's important that we train up a child in the way they should go. So when they get out there and go through the life's endeavors, when the Lord comes to them, they could be like, oh, this is what this was about. Instead of not having that, then they reject in the spirit the Lord who will reject them from life. So sorry. So it's definitely important. I hung on to Jesus, what my mama told me. I wasn't looking at what society was trying to paint him to be. I was looking on, at man. his righteousness that he was doing for whoever and whatever color you was. That's what kept me going through foster homes, living around different people, pigmentation of people, fostered that. It helped that. These people was nice to me than my own kind who was selling drugs and had me in the midst of danger. Come on, say that. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen, Derek. <laughs> he was getting me ready for such a time as this. Hallelujah. We thank you for that. Before, but it's probably hang up. We'll log back on and we'll finish up, my brother. I give y'all a chance to speak and we log back on and um we'll finish up right quick. This is an awesome word. Awesome word. Hmm. Definitely got Yeah, it really is. And you know, I just had one earlier. I was listening to you guys talk, but Earlier, when uh, Brother Lamille was, was talking about um, the gladness and um, uh, joyfulness, um, helping other people, I have experienced.